Hi everyone. Uh, today let us try to understand, make some sense of this complicated topic of uh, membranous labyrinth. Uh, let us break it down into small small parts. I hope uh, we can, by the end of this uh, presentation you will be able to have some confidence when you try to attempt this answer. So membranous uh, labyrinth is quite an important question. The same question was asked three times before. So you do not go to the exam without understanding, without uh, understanding the membranous labyrinth and having a good idea what you are going to write when this question comes in your exam. Okay. So the first thing that you guys have to remember about, a mem about the membranous labyrinth is it is a closed sac. It is a closed sac. It is like a balloon. It is like a balloon. Okay. A balloon is something, it's a closed sac. Okay, so the uh, it had it is not having any connection with any outer thing. So balloon is complete by itself. In the same way, the membranous labyrinth is also complete by itself. All the systems necessary for the product it is filled up with the fluid called the endolymph. It is filled up with the fluid called the endolymph. So the structures needed to produce this endolymph, the structures needed to resorb resorb this endolymph are all present in this sac itself. So it is not connected to any outer structure. It's the first thing that you have to understand. This is in contrast to the bony labyrinth. Bony labyrinth is connected to the brain. What is bony labyrinth? The bone that is surrounding bony labyrinth and the horizon and the membranous labyrinth both have the similar shape. But membranous labyrinth is smaller than the bony labyrinth and uh, it is housed inside. It is like present inside. Suppose this is some uh, some metal shell or something. Uh, this is the bony labyrinth. Inside that this balloon is there. This is the membranous labyrinth. So this is an example of uh, the bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth. So this bony labyrinth is filled up by a fluid called the perilymph. The fluid that is present inside the membranous labyrinth, as I just said, is filled is the endolymph. So bony labyrinth is connected to brain through two things. One is a cochlear aqueduct and the internal acoustic meatus. So through these, the infections of the brain can reach the labyrinth and from infection from the labyrinth can reach the brain. Okay. So bony labyrinth is not a closed structure. It is connected to the brain. So the CSF, what is perilymph? It is said perilymph is nothing but CSF, ultra filtrate or little bit of difference. It is very similar to CSF. Perilymph uh, looks more like uh, extracellular fluid, extracellular fluid, ECF, and endolymph looks more like intracellular fluid. Extracellular fluid has more potassium, intracellular fluid has more, pot uh, sorry, extracellular fluid has more sodium and intracellular fluid has more potassium. So there are some differences between the perilymph and endolymph. So I want you to understand that there is uh, difference between this uh, bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth. Bony labyrinth is bigger and endolabyrinth is uh, membranous labyrinth is smaller. Bony labyrinth uh, is filled up with a fluid called the perilymph and, and uh, membranous labyrinth is filled up with uh, a fluid called as endolymph. Okay, the, the parts of this membranous labyrinth, there are five parts of the membranous labyrinth. Before I come to explaining the parts, let me just give you one orientation. Suppose this is the nose of a person. Suppose this is the uh, the skull of the person. So this becomes the anterior, right? And this becomes the posterior. This entire structure, if we look at it, the three semicircle canal, the utricle, the saccule, and the cochlea are present in a posterior to anterior direction. That means uh, these three semicircular canals are present posteriorly towards the occiput and the membranous cochlea is present anteriorly towards the nose. So this is anteriorly placed, this is posteriorly took placed. So we will be describing it from posterior to anterior, all the three, all the structures. So what are the parts of the membranous labyrinth? You have the three semicircular canals. So these three semicircular canals that you have here. So this is the first one from posterior to anterior. The first one that you will encounter is the three semicircular canals. In front of the three semicircular canals, you have the structure, right? That is called the utricle. In front of it, you have a structure that is called the saccule. In front of it, the structure that is present is called the membranous cochlea. Okay. The utricle and the saccule, you uh, small ducts connections which connect together to form the endolymphatic duct. So the five structures are one the three semicircular canals, two the utricle, three the saccule, 
फोर द मेम्रेनस कॉकलिया एंड फाइव द इंडोलिम्फेटिक डक्टर सैक ओके सो दीज आर द फाइव स्ट्रक्चर्स दैट कंप्राइज द मेम्रेनस लैब्रिन ओके now why why is so much of importance given to this uh, this question is because this membranous labyrinth um, this membranous labyrinth houses or within it is present within it is are present actually the the crista which are present in the ampullae and the macula which is present in the utricle and saccule and the organ of cordy which is present throughout the organ of cartilage which is present throughout the membranous cochlea so this uh, membranous cochlea the scale and the organ of cartilage which is the sense organ of hearing is present in the membranous cochlea is present in the membranous cochlea the sense organ of hearing uh, called the organ of cartilage here you can see uh, suppose this is the bony uh, bony cochlea inside that is the the membranous cochlea now this is only this part is the membranous cochlea it is also called the scala media on top of it on top of it the two structures that you see here these are also filled with fluid perilymph there is scala vestibuli and the scala tympani so for us in this topic the more the important thing is that there is a sense organ of hearing the sense organ of hearing is present in the membranous cochlea and the sense organ of balance that is the three crista that are present in the three ampulla which are responsible for the angular acceleration and the two maculae that are present in the utricle and the saccule which are responsible for linear acceleration and vertical movements against the gravity or towards gravity and also to maintain the static neck reflexes the, this these things function the maculae the maculae function to maintain uh, linear acceleration and vertical movements and also head uh, head tilt kind of movements so and also and the uh, crista is what is doing the same present in the semicircular canals and is responsible for the angular acceleration so because these sense organs are present in this membranous cochlea in this membranous cochlea so the membranous cochlea becomes very important so suppose whatever whether you are moving up and down the uh, roller coaster you are you are riding your bike or your cycle or your car and you are going around a turn these sense organs of balance are giving information to the brain on a second to second basis uh you will know the importance of this uh, if you have seen a patient who is presenting to you with vertigo this patient is basically lying down on the bed and saying that i am falling so so debilitating is this disease so debilitating and so causing so much of problem to the patient that the patient cannot even walk patient is able to walk properly all his hands his limbs his head everything is there the only problem is there are some small granules in the crista Uh, in the in the in the ampulla and these are causing so much of uh, problem to the patient that the patient cannot walk also properly uh, without somebody support so they are so important okay now coming to the uh, each part of this uh, each part of this um, uh, membranous cochlea so the first thing that we are going to talk about are the three semicircular canals as i said they are present posteriorly when compared to the uh, in orientation of the body so they are present posteriorly the three semicircular canals are the first one you you have is called the the first one is called the lateral semicircular canal the lateral semicircular canal so this is the lateral semicircular canal the lateral semicircular canal is important because the bulge of this lateral semicircular canal is what you see in the what you see in the aditus what you see in the floor of a cortical mastoidectomy so this is the one that we see that when we do a surgery this is the one that we see and also if you remember that the lateral semicircular canal is the one that we see you remember that it is entering or it is communicating with the utricle through two openings it is communicating through both the sides it is communicating with the utricle whereas the other two you have the superior semicircular canal and the posterior semicircular canal this is posteriorly placed this is superiorly placed okay so posterior semicircular canal and the superior semicircular canal they are communicating with each other they are communicating with each other suppose this is the yeah, this is the superior semicircular canal this is the superior semicircular canal this is the ampulla of the superior semicircular canal and then uh, and then uh, 
we have uh, this one yeah posterior semicircular canal this is the posterior semicircular canal and this is the ampulla of the posterior semicircular canal so the uh, the crust this is called the crust the crust of the posterior the posterior semicircular canal and the superior semicircular canal joined to form what is called the crust commune of what you joined to form what is called the crust commune this crust commune join, enters into the utricle uh, to get both of them join together to form the crust commune crust commune opens into the utricle so these two things one two three four there are four you should expect four openings but there are only three openings because they form a crust commune which opens into the utricle so these three semicircular canals open into the utricle by five openings only by five openings only into the utricle because the superior semicircular canal and the horizontal semicircular canal join to form the crust commune join to form the crust commune okay so what is the other thing that is important uh, what is the other thing that is important uh, they 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 are present at right angles to each other all the three semicircular canals are present at right angles to each other that means you know three dimensional everybody understands i guess this is a two dimensions okay they are at 90 degrees so this is a third dimension that is looking into from the laptop or from the screen outside so this is the third third dimension that we say about all the three are at 90 degrees with each other all the three are at 90 degrees with each other all the three are at 90 degrees with each other so in all the three dimensions any movement any angular acceleration that occurs any movement in an angular direction okay any movement so when when a, when a person rotates uh, rotates then the fluid moves right when the fluid moves there is this uh, amp there is this crista that is there if uh, if there is movement of the fluid in this direction the crista will move in this direction and that will cause nerve depolarization and that nerve will send the information to the brain that is how this uh, three the three semicircular canals function and any movement of the head in any of the dimensions any angular movement of the head in any of the three dimensions these three semicircular canals will pick up immediately and send it to the brain okay so yeah it contains three part three semicircular canals lateral posterior and superior they are present at 90 degrees to each other they contain a sense organ of balance called crista which is present in the ampulla what is solid angle the angle formed among among them among the three semicircular semicircular canals is called a solid angle the solid angle is the angle formed among formed among the three semicircular canals among the three semicircular canals is called the solid angle is called a solid angle okay that is an important question from the neat pg point of view okay what is utricle these three semicircular canals open into the structure that is present into a structure this is also you know it's an empty structure it is filled with endolymph so they ent enter into the they open into the utricle by five openings as i said already because the uh, crust the crura of the posterior posterior and the superior, superior semicircular canals joined to form the crust commune which opens into the utricle so this utricle has uh, five openings of the semicircular canals so from posterior to anteriorly we have the three semicircular canals in just all the three semicircular canals will open into the utricle so utricle will go into the saccule utricle and the saccule are connected to each other and the saccule connects to the cochlear duct or the membranous cochlea okay so the crura of the posterior and superior semicircular canal fuse together to form crust commune as and called the crust commune which uh, uh, form a common crust called the crust commune which opens into the utricle why is it important uh, why is this important utricle is important utricle is important because utricle contains the sense organ of balance uh, horizontal sen sense organ it senses the horizontal thing uh, saccule also contains macula saccule also contains macula utricle also contains macula so both of them have the same name macula are present in the utricle and the saccule you can remember this crista is present in the semicircular canal semicircular canals for c c for crista this is also you can remember it like this so the sense organ that is present in the semicircular canals is called the crista the sense organ of balance both of them are sense organs of balance but sense organ of balance that is present in the utricle and saccule is called the macula okay now coming to the saccule now coming to the saccule okay 
saccule is present in front of this utricle okay Ut this is utricle and this is the saccule this is the saccule okay saccule is present in front of the utricle how is it connected to the utricle sorry how is it connected to the saccule utricle gives a small duct in front of it that is called the utricular duct saccule give also gives a small duct in behind it that is called a saccular duct that is called the saccular duct yeah this is the saccular duct okay so this is the utricular duct this is the saccular duct they both join to form what is called the utriculo saccular duct utricular saccular duct which uh, continues forward to form what is called the endolymphatic duct which continues forward to form the endolymphatic sac okay endolymphatic sac is also another important part of uh, this membranous uh, labyrinth membranous labyrinth okay so let me have a quick recap uh, of this utricular saccular duct so you have the saccule saccule uh, saccule is present in front of the utricle okay saccule is present in front of the utricle it is connected to the utricular utricle through the utricular duct and saccular to join to form the utricular saccular duct which come which continue as the endolymphatic duct which can which ends as the endolymphatic sac this endolymphatic sac is an extra dural structure it is present ab in, above outside the dura extra dural structure it is present between the bone of the posterior cranial fossa and the dura between the bone of the posterior cranial fossa and the dura and this endolymphatic sac is responsible for resorption of endolymph endolymph which is produced by this tria vascularis is resorbed by this endolymphatic sac okay so have i covered everything utricle is connected by utricular saccular duct utricular, utricular saccular duct forms endolymphatic sac this ends blindly endolymphatic duct end, ends blindly as the endolymphatic sac this endolymphatic sac is present in the extra dural space in between the dura of the posterior fossa and the skull bones so here also we have this uh, here also we have this uh, macula in the in the saccule also we have the macula we have the macula in the utricle also we have the macula utricle also and saccule these are responsible for vertical and horizontal uh, movements they are they are they sense the uh, so utricle is uh, sensing the horizontal and uh, saccule is uh, sensing the vertical in either you are going against the gravity or towards gravity that's what the saccule uh, the macula which is present in the saccule uh, senses okay so yeah we talked about endolymphatic sac it is responsible for resorption of endolymph endolymph yeah we said in the in beginning only endolymph is a fluid that fills the whole of the membranous labyrinth whether it is a semicircular canals whether it is a semicircular canals whether it is a utricle whether it is a saccule whether it is a utricular saccular duct whether it is a endolymphatic duct whether it is a membranous cochlea all of this is filled up by endolymph endolymph right now coming to the next slide membranous cochlea what is membranous cochlea membranous cochlea membranous cochlea is this coiled tube that you can see which is present anteriorly which is anteriorly placed it is it is making a two and half it is making a two and half to two three fourth of a turn around a bony axis known as a modulus now for you to it's also called yeah it is also called a scala media also called a cochlear duct okay one more point saccule is connected to cochlea through the ductus reunion so here you have this saccule uh saccule and in front of it you have this uh, membranous cochlea it is connected through this small uh, some duct kind of a thing called ductus reunions ductus reunions called a ductus reunions so saccule is connected to the membranous cochlea through ductus reunions utricle and saccule are connected to each other through the utricular saccular duct which becomes the endolymphatic duct okay so now to make you understand the, how this functions now what is uh, bony cochlea bony cochlea is a coiled tube it looks like a snail okay so you have this pipe you have this pipe the pipe actually starts coiling around itself so if you take a straight pipe and coil it around like this coil it around like this so you will have what is called a coiled tube basically a coiled tube okay so this is coiled tube 
okay this is called this is making two and a half turns okay if this is the bony cochlea if this is the bony cochlea then these the the membranous cochlea is a tube that is present in the middle of this bony cochlea it is present in the middle of this bony cochlea if you can understand sorry for the diagram diagram is not so good at drawing it perfectly but this is what i mean to say when i say that this is the bony cochlea this is the bony cochlea and the membranous cochlea membranous cochlea is present inside the bony cochlea this is a closed structure there is perilymph on the outside and there is endolymph on the inside so this is a coiled tube when you make a section of this coiled tube when you make a section of this coiled tube uh, bony coiled tube actually yeah so when you make a section of the bony coil tube you will see that it is having three partitions above middle and down the above part is called the scala scala vestibuli scala vestibuli below part is called the scala tympani so this is the membranous cochlea so this membranous cochlea is dividing is dividing this bony cochlea into three parts uh, scala vestibuli scala tympani and this what is present in the middle is called the scala media this scala media is nothing but the cochlear duct also called the membranous cochlea so it is having three names so don't get confused membranous cochlea cochlear duct or the scala media all of them are the same all of them are the same okay scala media membranous cochlea and cochlear duct all of them are the same now uh, why this is so important because membranous cochlea is what houses the organ of corti this is a organ of corti what is organ of corti organ of corti is the sense organ of hearing so sense organ of hearing the so sound coming from outside will hit the oval window which is uh, closing the scala vestibuli and the the wave will pass through the scala tympani scala tympani is closed by the round window and when this wave passes depending on the frequency of sound one particular part of this basal or the organ of corti gets gets activated so the cells that are present here the hair cells that are present here they will get activated and the message is passed on the message is conveyed through this eighth nerve to the brain so that is the what is the theory of hearing okay so this is uh, scala vestibuli is covered by oval window scala tympani is covered by round window and when there is this uh, uh, the wave of the fluid that is passing through this coil tube at one particular part of the coil tube that part will get activated and the organ of corti which is present on top of that will get activated the hair cells will get activated they will get depolarized and that information is sent to the brain so that is how the organ of corti becomes the sense organ of hearing it is present in the membranous cochlea so again let's have a small recap okay we are having a lots of recaps yeah but i hope this helps uh, so sense organ the what does semicircular canals do semicircular canals have an ampulla inside the ampulla we have the crista inside the ampulla we have the crista crista is doing what it is sensing angular acceleration then then you have the utricle then this is the utricle the utricle has a sense organ called the macula then in front of it you have a saccule saccule also has a sense organ called the macula macula and uh, uh, a macula of the sense of the utricle and saccule what do they do they are responsible for balance okay we will come to the details in the end but utricle is sensing the horizontal movements and saccula is sensing the vertical movements after that we have the membranous cochlea in that the entire part here we said only one part is having crista one part is having macula here the entire membranous cochlea the, the entire length you will have the organ of corti the entire length you will have the organ of corti this entire length uh, depending on which part will get activated that part frequency will be sent to the brain and that that's how the organ of corti becomes the sense organ of hearing so this is same thing uh, to uh, uh, you know to again i'm trying to tell the same thing so this is the scala vestibuli this is the scala tympani scala vestibuli oval window and uh, oval window sorry and the scala tympani round window okay and between them you have the membranous cochlea this is what we are talking about now membranous cochlea also called cochlear duct also is called scala media 
also called scalar media. So it has various structures here. Okay, this is a very complicated thing. Yeah, we will again talk about it when the <coughs> thing comes. Uh, so you here you have the what is called it is separating the membrane that is separating the scalar media from the scalar vestibuli. We call it the vestibular membrane. The membrane that is separating the scalar media from the scalar tympani, we call it the basilar membrane. So there is something called the vestibular membrane and there is something called the basilar membrane. So the vestibular membrane is separating scalar media from scalar vestibuli and uh, basilar membrane is separating the scalar media from the scalar tympani. Okay. On the basilar membrane is present the organ of cortex. That is what this is. These are the hair cells. This is the organ of cortex. And on top of it, you have another membrane called the tectorial membrane. So all this comprise what is called the organ of cortex. Okay. All this comprise what is called the organ of cortex. On the lateral side of it, you will have the stria vascularis. So stria vascularis is what is present on the lateral side, which is close to the bone. So this is producing endolymph on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. Okay. So this is the production side of the endolymph. Now, whatever depolarizations are happening, these are connected to the nerves. The, these hair cells are connected to the nerves. This nerve is nothing but the eighth cranial nerve or uh, 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 vestibular cochlear nerve, right? This is, this is from the cochlear part of the vestibular cochlear nerve. Here you have the spiral ganglia. Uh, now, coming to the, all these are like uh, soft kind of structures. The hard kind of structure that you have is the uh, this uh, this is the spiral lamina, the bone, the bone of the modulus. This is like this, right? This is like this. Okay, uh, this is around a central cone of bone. That cone of bone has a modulus, and in and it is giving projections inside. It is projection inside. That is called the spiral lamina. Okay. Now coming to uh, the sensory end organ of hearing, organ of cortex. Now here also there is a, uh, a specific point that is important for you guys to remember. So, uh, so sen what is sensory end organ of hearing? Yeah, organ of cortex. We know that. Okay, it is situated in the scalar media or membranous cochlea. Yeah, we know that. Already we know that. Okay, then what happens? The organ of cortex is present. As I said, it is present throughout this membranous cochlea. So here actually it's a very good diagram. Here actually it's a very good diagram. Why? Because you can see that there is an inside tube, right, which is present uh, in the outer, the, the inside tube is present uh, inside the outer tube, okay, fine, this is the outer tube, inside that you have the inner tube. So this is what we are talking about, is called the membranous cochlea. You can see this is also a tube, okay, this is also a tube, this is the scala, scala vestibuli, this is the scala tympani. So this is continuing forward, this is continuing forward, continuing forward, continuing forward and at the apex of this is communicating with the scala tympani. The point where the two communicate with each other is called the helicotrema, is called the helicotrema. Okay, scala vestibuli and scala tympani are connected at the apex of this uh, structure or the apex of this coil uh, called the helicotrema. That is how the perilymph circulates. Now, this from our point of view, uh, what is important now is uh, uh, the uh, the organ of cortex that is present here at the base of the cochlea. It is sensing higher frequency sounds. Higher frequency sounds are uh, uh, are perceived by the basal turn of the cochlea. The organ of cortex that is present in the basal turn of the cochlea it perceives high frequency sounds. Whereas the uh, organ of cortex that is present at the apex of the coil is perceiving the low frequency sounds. So this becomes really complicated after, after suppose next day if I ask you, you will, come, you will definitely forget. I too will forget definitely. So if to avoid that, I have come up with one mnemonic, HB pencil. We all would have written in our school days. HB pencil, B stands for basal turn of cochlea, H stands for high frequency sounds. High frequency sounds are perceived by the basal turn of the cochlea. High frequency sounds are perceived by the basal turn of the cochlea. Now, apical turn of the cochlea, low frequency sounds. How do we remember this? We remember this by LA, Los Angeles, city in New in uh, America. Los Angeles, LA, apical frequency, apical coil of the cochlea will uh, perceive the low frequency sounds. So, low frequency sounds are perceived by the apical coil of the cochlea. You can remember it by the mnemonic LA. 
Now, why do we need to remember this? Because there are some diseases, some diseases which affect the basal turn of the cochlea. There are some diseases which affect the apical turn of the cochlea. So, in apical turn of the cochlea, the first, the first and the only example that we have is called the Meniere's disease. It's called the Meniere's disease. What happens in Meniere's disease? Meniere's disease, there is increase of endolymph. Endolymph increases in size, either because of increased production or decreased resorption, the endolymph is increased. When endolymph is increased, this uh, membranous cochlea that is present increases in size. Okay. So, when it increases in size, at the basal turn of the cochlea, there is a lot of space, but the apical turn of the cochlea, there is not much space. So, this dilatation affects the apical turn of the cochlea first. Because it affects the apical turn of the cochlea, so the frequency of the, the organ of corti at the apex of this cochlea will get damaged. Organ of corti at the apex of the cochlea will get damaged. So, what are the frequency of the sounds that you can perceive at the apex of the cochlea? LA Los Angeles, low frequency hearing sounds. So, low frequency hearing sounds are affected first. This we can uh, do by, a, this we can find out by doing a PTA, Pluton audiogram. So, low frequency sounds will, will get affected, high frequency sounds will be fine. So, you will have an upsloping type of a Pluton audiogram. Yeah, when we talk about Pluton audiogram, we will come to this, but I am trying to give you a broader picture, okay. So, what happens in Meniere's disease? There is dilatation of the, there is increase in production of the endolymph. So, when endolymph starts is increasing, then the membranous, membranous, uh, membranous cochlea gets, gets starts increasing in size. And where is less space in this uh, uh, cochlea, the apex of the cochlea has less space. So, the dilatation affects the apex of the cochlea. And when it affects the apex of the cochlea, the low frequency sounds uh, are affected first because the organ of corti that is present at the apex of the cochlea perceives low frequency hearing sounds. So, in the in the Pewton audiogram, sorry, not this, in the Pewton audiogram, you will see a upsloping type of a, uh, audiogram. Okay. So, this is about the apical turn, basal turn of the cochlea. All the other diseases that we are going to talk about, whether it's autotoxic drugs, autotoxic drugs, noise trauma, presbycusis, these affect the basal turn of the cochlea. So, high frequency hearing sounds are affected. We remember the mnemonic, right? HB pencil. High frequency sounds are affected first in the basal turn of the cochlea. So, the basal turn of the cochlea, uh, uh, high frequency hearing sounds. So, high frequency sound starts falling. So, we have a downsloping type of an audiogram, okay, uh, right. So, now coming, what are the uh, diseases which affect the basal turn of the cochlea? One is autotoxic drugs. So, when you are giving some drugs like cisplatin or some streptomycin kind of things, so those things will affect the cochlea and mostly the basal turn of the cochlea where the high frequency hearing sounds, high frequency sounds are affected first. So, uh, when you are starting to give this autotoxic drugs, you take a basal audiogram, you take the audiogram before you start uh, the, the treatment and after, while you are doing the treatment, you keep checking whether the audiogram, the audiogram is being maintained or not. If it is not being maintained, it means uh, if the basal high frequency sounds are getting, high frequency will be here, high frequency sounds are getting affected, then it means that, uh, suppose this is 100, this will be 800, 8000. Uh, or suppose this is 250, this will be 8000 hertz. I am talking about hertz. Okay, so this is not important. All uh, this is too much of explanation, I guess. But I uh, want, want you to remember it because if you give more uh, examples, you I guess you can remember it better. So one is autotoxic drugs, noise trauma also. You A guy goes into working in a factory, a guy goes working in a factory uh, who where there is noise trauma, lot of sound is there. Then uh, before entering the factory, before joining the job, he gets a basal audiogram and then he starts checking for the repeatedly every three months or every six months or whatever. He checks for this audiogram and sees if the uh, basal uh, turn of the cochlea, the high frequency hearing sounds are getting affected also. Presbycusis, what is presbycusis? The hearing loss that someone gets as they age, that is called presbycusis. Okay, so where are we now? Uh, basal turn of the cochlea, the diseases, basal turn of cochlea diseases affect the high frequency sounds uh, first. They affect the high frequency sounds first. 
apical turn diseases affect low frequency sounds first the example for apical turn is minias disease example for basal turn diseases are ototoxic drugs noise trauma and presbyteriasis okay i hope i have not bored you uh, now coming to the sense organs sense organs of balance sense organs of balance the first one is the crista crista as we have already talked about is present in the semicircular canal this is what i am talking about this is the crista this is the ampulla in that is present the crista okay so suppose the person is moving about uh, doing uh, rotating around uh, rotating around as in ballet dancing for example uh, so there will be movement of the fluid in this direction uh, and causing the crista to move in this direction so crista if you look under a microscope will appear like this it will have something that's a gelatinous fluid that is called the cupula if you can remember it's fine if you don't remember also it's fine so there is this gelatinous fluid that is called the cupula in that the hair cells are projecting inwards the hair bundles are projecting inwards they are coming from the nerves uh, sorry they are coming from the hair cells they are coming from the hair cells hair cells have this hair bundles which project into a gelatinous fluid called the cupula and these hair cells are connected to the nerve fibers so when when a person moves in this direction the cupula moves in this direction causing the hair cells to bend and when they bend there is depolarization of the nerve cells which is picked up by the nerve fibers which which uh, which will be transmitted to the brain okay which will be transmitted to the brain this is how the crista which is present in the semicircular canals detect angular or rotational movements so angular or rotational movements when you are going in a merry go round or you are doing ballet dancing or rotating around just like that the 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 organs that are present in the semicircular canals will get activated what are the organs that are present crista in that what is getting activated the hair cells which are present in the cupula these things will move causing you to perceive the angular acceleration now coming to macula the sense organs of balance that are present in the utricle and saccule that are present in the utricle and saccule is called the macula what did we see about the crista crista looks like a mountain okay but uh, macula looks more like a rectangle like a box okay macula looks like a box okay uh, so what are the various parts of this so again you have the hair cells hair cells are supported by the supporting cells under them you have the nerve fibers which are connecting them to the brain through the vestibular nerve to the brain okay in these are present hairs again hairs they are called the stereocilia they extend into a membrane again a gelatinous kind of fluid called the otolithic membrane okay they extend into a gelatinous kind of fluid called otolithic membrane on top of it you have what is called the otoconia otoconia are nothing but uh, otoconia are nothing but some calcium granules kind of things which are present in this otolithic membrane so when you move like this the otolithic membrane move the the otoconia moves uh, if you move like this down or up also this this will move and that movement is perceived by the stereo cilia which is transmitted to the hair cells which transmitted to the vestibular nerve which transmitted to the brain <coughs> sorry brain so how do you remember the functions of uh, uh, utricle and saccule you can remember it by gpl girls premier league gpl girls premier league g stands for gravity so you are going up uh, against gravity you are going towards gravity that is detected by this macula which is present in the utricle and the saccule position of the head you are turning the head sorry this is the head you are turning the head to the head tilt movements we call it head tilt movements head tilt to the left head tilt to the right whatever so you tilt your head that is perceived by this uh, macula which is present in the utricle and saccule and linear acceleration you are going in a cycle or something fast in front that is perceived by this so what is the work of the macula what is the work of the macula of the utricle and the saccule they are perceiving gpl girls premier league gravity position of head and linear acceleration gravity position of head and linear acceleration so gpl they are perceiving these three things all, all the three things are perceived by both the macula okay what what do they do they to maintain static equilibrium you are able to have your orientation in space you are you are you are uh, you understand that you are standing you are understand that you are sitting you understand that you are on the first floor you are understand second floor higher or lower okay all this 
when you are going on a on a roller coaster ride you are going up and down up and down how do you know that you are going up and down up and down all this is because of this uh, macula which are present in the utricle and the sacula so even if somebody pushes you also this postural neck tonic neck reflexes and writing reflexes that we have postural tonic neck and writing reflexes that is being maintained by the utricle and the sacula that is being maintained by the utricle and sacula so what do the utricle and sacula uh, macula of the utricle and sacula do they detect gpl that is gravity position of it and linear acceleration all this why they do that to maintain static equilibrium so that you can maintain the your position of the head your position of the body in relation or in orientation to space in relation to space okay now you want to go one step further and uh, remember what sacule does and utricle does if you understand macula is there in the utricle and sacule they do gpl okay Girls, Premier League, gravity, position of head, and linear acceleration. This is fine. If you want to go further, one step further, if it is possible, sacul means not sleeping line, so vertical movements. So sacul that is present here, which is connected to the membranous cochlea through the ductus reunion, it has something called the macula. It has something called the macula. It senses vertical movement only. It senses vertical movement going up or going down. Gravity. Okay. So this is the vertical movement. Sacul is not sleeping line. S yes, is not yes. So sacul is not so uh, sacul is not sleeping line. So it detects vertical movements. When uh, utricle and sacul is not detecting uh, uh, horizontal movement, sleeping movement, that means utricle is able to uh, detect the horizontal movement. The horizontal, the linear acceleration, the horizontal movements is detected by the utricle. After hearing to all this uh, complicated anatomy, anyone is going to say, "Oh, so U also stands for utricle H horizontal." Like this also, you can remember. Okay, this is like extra. If you can remember that sacul is not sleeping line, so it is detecting vertical movements. Utricle because it is oh, horrible anatomy, it's difficult anatomy. So H also stands oh, stands for utricle and H stands for horizontal movements. You can remember like this also. Okay, thank you so much for the patient listening. I hope I have made your step towards uh, passing your ENT exam a little bit easier.